Hi, what's going on? It's Mando Crusader, and welcome to some theory crafting um, for Historic Horizons. Uh, so, Historic Horizons, for those of you who don't know, is coming to Magic Gathering Arena on Tuesday, as of, uh, well, not as of anything, it's coming Tuesday. Um, and I was doing some theory crafting on what decks to play within this new meta that's going to be taking MTGA by storm. And um, I came up with two, and I thought I'd share it with you guys, share a little bit of my thought process, and maybe give you a little bit of preview of some decks that may be making an appearance on the channel. Um, there, the two decks are a bit, are both Rakdos, they're both red-black, um, one is Rakdos Sacrifice, which is kind of a semi-existing archetype already, but I think will be elevated mainly by Yogmoth Thran Physician, while the other is a completely new archetype in Rakdos Madness, and that's probably the one that's most exciting, it's definitely the most new, filled with cards coming in Historic Horizons, so yeah, we're just gonna be taking a look at both of these today and um, just doing a little theory crafting. Uh, I have, a, I do have a maybe board for the Rakdos Sacrifice deck. Um, I'm pretty, but however, I'm pretty confident with the choices for Rakdos Madness. So I don't, actually don't have a maybe board for this one. But if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the for either of them. Let me know in the comments below. Um, additionally, if you like this video, or would like to see more videos like this, be sure to leave a like on the video, it really helps the channel out, and it lets me know you want more content like this, because I know to some people this type of content can be a little bit boring, so if you guys think it is, and you don't want to see any more of it, well, I guess let me know in the comments, but if you do, be sure to not only let me know in the comments, but also like the video. Also, if you could subscribe, ring the bell, that'd be really helpful to the channel. Um, but right, enough of that, let's get into, let's get into theory crafting. So, we've got our Rakdos Sack deck here, and to be honest, it looks pretty similar to the basic shell that's already in Historic. We've got the Cat Oven combo of Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven. We've got um, some other Sacrifice Fodder and Shambling Gas. We've got the Dreadhorde Butcher, the Priest of Forgotten Gods, the Mayhem Devil, the Woe Strider... Um, just all the stuff you'd expect in a Sacrifice deck at this point. Um, however, this does have a couple of unique aspects. The first being the brand new card of Yogmoth Thran Physician. Um, this card is an absolute house for 2 BB. You get a legendary human cleric that is 2-4. It has protection from humans. Um, if you pay one life, you can sack another creature and put a minus one, minus one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card. And for two black and discarding a card, we can pl proliferate, which for those of you who don't know what proliferate is, choose any number of permanents and or players and then give each another counter of each kind they already have. So... That's coming in Historic Horizons. It's a really, really powerful card, and it's a real boon for sack decks, which this is. It's going to be a big boon for um, uh, Yund Sacrifice as well, but I wanted to go with Rakdos because it's a bit simpler, and I don't have the wild cards for the Gruul land base, um, but this is basically the third free sack outlet. I guess technically fourth if you include Witch's Oven, but this is the this is the third free sack out with a body attached to it, and one with protection from humans at that, which as many people have said and are correct, may be really relevant with cards like Esper Sentinel and Thalia's Lieutenant, possibly invigorating a a historic humans deck. So this is really good. It pairs up well. Um, it's part of this other sack outlets, of course, being Woe Strider. Priest of Forgotten Gods, and Witch's Oven. Um, all of them being free. Additionally, we have Village Rites, of course, to sack our sack fodder. We have, obviously, the cult, big Cauldron Familiar with pair with Witch's Oven. We've got Shambling Ghast, which can either, which can either put a, 
uh, kill a one toughness creature the opponent has, or bring out a treasure. Um, and we also kind of have Dreadhorde Butcher as well, so once this gets nice and big, we can sack it and deal like 5, 6, 7 damage to the opponent's face. So, and yeah, that's, that's basically how the deck works, right? It's, it, it's sack. It's sack. What's, what's really unique about this? Well... The unique, one of the unique thing is, is that I ditched the check lands. I ditched the Dragon Skull Summit. Uh, if we go into edit deck real quick, um, they are in the maybe board. Um, instead, I put in three Fabled Passages, which synergize well with the Mayhem Devil, because as you sacrifice the passage, that triggers the Mayhem Devil. I put in an extra mountain and two copies of Agadim's Awakening, which can serve as extra land, or they can serve as a way to help us recover after a board wipe by spending a bunch of mana, that which at that late, late game we, we will have, and we can bring back, you know, Yogmoth, we can bring back Mayhem Devil, we can bring back a Dreadhorde Butcher, we can bring back all of these things from the graveyard and sort of set us back up uh, again after a board wipe um the sideboard we have soul guide lantern for um graveyard strategies we've got thought for control and whatnot we have a braid for artifact hate feed the swarm for enchantment hate doom blade if we need some extra removal magma spray to deal with phoenix um a Spark Harvest, if we, for some reason, need extra Planeswalker removal. Uh, and two Coligans Command, because it's it's just a really good card, isn't it? And I never, I'm never disappointed to draw one. And some matches, we may need more. We may need some more Hand Hate. We may need some extra Artifact Hate. We may need to deal with a little, need a little bit more reanimation, which it provides. We may just need to deal two damage to the face, but... It can do all of those things, and having it in the sideboard is a nice, um, a nice tool to have in case we need it for some reason. Um, now we do, like I said, for this deck we do have a couple of cards in the... <clears throat> I hate when it does that. We do have a couple of cards in the maybe board. Um, obviously we have the Dragon Skull Summits. So if the mana base, which besides Agonim's Awakening, we've got four pathways, four shock lands... Um, four mountains, four swamps, three fabled passages, a castle lockman, and a Phyrexian tower. Um, if this doesn't work out, if we find, if I find that, like, we're not getting our red mana, uh, consistently enough or whatever, we can put, we can slot the Dragon Skull Summits back in, take out the Aghanim's Awakenings, take out, like, a fabled passage or a mountain or whatever, and sort of fix the mana base that way. Uh, additionally, we have an extra Woe Strider. Um, with all of the sack outlets in the deck from, again, Priest and Wit and Oven, Village Rites, and now Yogmoth, I was, I'm, I sort of was thinking maybe we could only get away with two Woe Striders, but if, like, we need, we need to hit those more constantly, uh, I'm thinking about adding a, another one in. Additionally, we have Scrap Heap Scrounger. Which, um, is a staple in almost every Rakdos sack deck that I've seen online. I get why it's in the deck. I understand it can be sacked if necessary. It's a nice big beater, and you can bring it back from the graveyard. Like, I get why it's there, but I feel like maybe it's not needed? Maybe not. I'm not sure. But it's still there, just in case you want to bring it back in at some point. Um, and finally, we have a second new card from, um, Historic Horizons in Putrid Goblin. Now, Putrid Goblin would be Sack Fodder. Um, it is, um, actually, I can just search, search this right up here. So, Putrid Goblin, it's a one black... Zombie Goblin, a 2-2, two -two, and it's not very remarkable, right? But its ability makes it remarkable. It has Persist. 
So when Putrid Goblin dies, if it had no 1-1 one, one counters on it, we get to return it to the battlefield under our control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. So basically this is sack fodder that comes back to be sacked again. And that's in the maybe board because it seems like a, a decent thing to sack. Um, we can get multiple uses out of it. And I have it here in case I find us needing more sack fodder. Because while we do have four cauldron familiars and four shambling ghasts, and to a lesser extent, four dreadhorde butchers, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe we might need a little bit more? I'm not sure. Leave, leave your guys' opinion in the comments below. But that's why it's in the maybe board. So that's my, Ra that's my Rakdos sack deck. Um, I think it'd be really fun. I think it would be effective. Um, as the main board shows, I'm still working on a couple of the kinks, but I think we're definitely going to be seeing this, um, on the channel as I test it out. Um, maybe multiple times as I test out different versions and see, kind of see what sticks. Um, the other one, other deck, as I said, it's Rakdos Madness. This is the final version. Um, unless, of course, you guys have any better suggestions, in which case... Please let me know. So, the Madness is a new archetype that's coming to Stork with Historic Horizons. And I'm excited to try it out. Uh, I've seen a lot of theory crafting about this. I've seen people talk about how it could be used with Arcanist. It could be uh, used with, with many different types of already established, like, Rakdos shells. But I'm thinking that a dedicated shell would be the best way to make this work. And that's sort of what I've created here. So, first things first, this deck does have a companion, Obosh the Prey Piercer. Um, so, every single card in our deck is of odd mana value. So, obviously, Obosh, uh, it costs... 5 mana, but it's a 3-5 when you put it on the field, and if a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal combat deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to permanent or player instead. So, if necessary, this basically doubles the damage of everything in our deck. Um, and speaking of that deck, our creatures are going to be um, a Blazing Root Walla. We've got 3 of those. Um, and then, which is a new card, by the way, I should, I should mention this, I don't, I'm not gonna say every single new card, but pretty much all of the decks, of uh, cards, I can't speak today, all of the cards in this deck are pretty much new cards. Um, except, for, like, this little section, but we got Blazing Root Walla, new card, um, it has a madness value of zero, so if we discard this card, we literally get to play it for free. Um, and it can become a 3-1 with at the cost of 1 red. Pretty good deal. Um, we got Dragon's Rage Channeler, which is sort of the in, one of the cores of this deck. So, Dragon Rage Channeler, for 1 red, you get a 1-1 one, one Human Shaman. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, we surveil 1, so we can look at the top of our deck. And, and if we can put it into our graveyard if we don't like it. Um, and it has the important Delirium. As long as there are four or more card types among the cards in your graveyard, Dragon's Rage Channeler gets 2-2, two, two, has flying, and attacks each combat if able. Now the big challenge with this, especially without fetch lands, is getting four card types in the graveyard. Um, we have five different card types in this deck. Um, we have creatures, we got an enchantment with football crater, we've got some instants, we've got some sorceries, and we have lands. The And we have an artifact as well, so that's six. Um, the question is, how do we get all those types in the graveyard? And we have some answers to that question, one of which is another new card, Insolent Neonate. It's a 1-1, one -one, it has menace, but importantly, discard a card, Sacrifice Insolent Neonate, draw a card. So that's a way to get a card into the graveyard. We've got Merchant of the Veil, which is just continual Insolent Neonates for more mana. 
admittedly. But it's got a decent 2-3 body attached. We can do it once for one mana. Uh, discard a card. And if you do, draw one. And then, once it's on the field, for three mana, we can discard cards. You can discard a card and draw a card. Um, we also have Seasoned Pyromancer. Another big new card coming in in Historic Horizons. Um, when Seasoned Pyromancer enters the battlefield, discard two cards, then draw two cards. And Keely, very key, if you put this on the battlefield with no cards in hand, you still get to draw two cards. So that's just great value. For each non-land card discarded this way, create a 1-1 red elemental creature token. So we get some tokens, we get some draw, we get to put cards in the graveyard. It's got a nice 2-2 body attached to it. And what, even when it's in the graveyard, for 3 mana, we can ex... Not 3, for 5 mana, we can exile Season Pyromancer and create some more tokens. That's great. That's it, we got Hollow One. Um, it costs... Basically, it's a 5 mana card, but uh, the objective here is... A, and it's another build around with Dragon Rage Channeler, similar to that. Is to cast it for free. So we get a free 4-4 four, four on the field. Hollow One costs 2 mana less to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn. So that's just that's just great value. And since the whole point of our deck is to be discarding cards, cycling cards, putting cards in the graveyard to activate Dragon Rage Channeler, and to activate this, to activate another card, um, to activate Unholy Heat, um... This synergizes perfectly, plus it's another card type to put in the graveyard to activate DRC. So that's great. Final creature is a one-off Archfiend of Ifnir. Um, it has flying, it has a 5-4, um, and has the ability of whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. This serves, this card serves as our curve topper. Um, it obviously synergizes with everything else in the deck. If it sticks around, or if we do enough with it in one turn, this can serve as a board wipe for us. If And, and it also has cycling, so it's not a dead card in our hand as well. For enchantments, we've got two footfall craters. Um, a, we can play it to give our creatures haste. Or we can cycle it to power up any one of our cards. And it serves as another card type to put in the graveyard for Dragon's Rage Channeler. Um, for instance, we got a copy of Fatal Push. We got a couple of copies of Unholy Heat, a new card that also has Delirium. So instead of doing 2 damage to the creature or Planeswalker, it deals 6 if Delirium is activated. Um, we also have a copy of Coligan's Command because every Rakdos deck, in my opinion, should be running this card. It's just great. Um, we also have a few copies of, um, uh, one copy of Blood Chief's Thirst. Just more removal. It can hit Planeswalkers if it's kicked. It's just good stuff. We got a copy of Bone Shards, which is one of the cards I'm most excited about coming in this, in Historic Horizons. Um, it's basically Spark Harvest with Upside for decks like Rakdos Arcanist or Rakdos Madness. It's basically Spark Harvest it, for one black mana, destroy target creature or planeswalker, except instead of paying an absurdly higher amount of mana or sacking a creature, instead we can sack a creature or discard a card, which is, if you haven't guessed by now, is kind of the whole thing we're trying to do with this deck. Um, we also have four copies of Faithless Looting, obvious include, like, this is a no-brainer, Draw two cards, discard two cards for one red, and you can flash it back for two and a red. Literal perfection for this deck. We also have three copies of Thoughtseize, because hand disruption is good. Um, our lands, we got the Pathways, the Blood Crypts, Mountains, Swamps, four Fabled Passages to try to get land into the graveyard. And also to, deal with, to assist with that, we have four Canyon Sloughs, the Cycling Lands from Amonkhet Remastered that we can cycle into the graveyard as well to help activate the Delirium on our DRC and Unholy Heat. Uh, the sideboard, we got an extra copy of Bone Shards, co a couple copies of Duress for Control, we got two copies of Magma Spray for, Jessica, for Is It Phoenix, 
a couple of soul guide lanterns for graveyard strategies a couple extra copies of unholy heat in case we need more removal three copies of Coligan's command um because i want artifact hate and i would be using a braid but obosh requires everything to be odd so we're using Coligan's command as our artifact hate and two copies of farika's li libation yeah that's the word nailed it um as enchantment hate for those pesky rest in peace or ley line of the void users um again normally i would be using feed the swarm like in um the sack deck but it needs to be odd and this is odd so yeah that's that's the deck i think it's really solid i think um it has enough ways to get cards into the graveyard to um cons relatively i want to say consistently but relatively consistently activate delirium in a very timely manner obviously we don't have our fetch lands right but i do think that having four fabled passage as well as the cycling lands kind of helps mitigate that i think the fact that we have six different card types in our deck helps increase our chances and i think if i think this is the way to go if we're gonna have a madness if a madness or delirium is going to work in historic i think this is the way to go but that's what that's my opinion let me know what you guys think because i would like to hear you guys opinion hear your guys's thoughts um see if, if you guys have any suggestions let me know i think this is a great list but um i'm always willing to um take advice i'm still relatively new to building my own decks um but yeah this is these are i'm just doing some theory crafting here so again just let me know in the comments i already said that but you know what you can't say it too much right so um that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed this video remember if you did like it especially if you want more of this type of content um subscribe bring the bell yada yada uh that's about it uh see ya oh wait actually before i see you um post in the comments also any other theory crafted decks that you guys have made or you guys have seen that look interesting because i'm i i i can't because i just want more i, I just want to hear what everyone else is talking about in regards to historic horizons because i'm so excited i can't wait until tuesday so yeah okay no i'm done i think that's it uh have a good one